In Texas, state officials say the recent power grid emergency is now under control after a historic winter storm hit the state. But there are still tens of thousands of people without power, and getting everyone back online could take days. But what exactly led to this major failure, and could it ever happen here? Meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff has the story. Anna, this week I talked to the head of a local power company about what exactly happened in Texas and how disasters like this can be prevented in the future. Unprecedented cold in Texas has led to an ongoing unprecedented disaster. At its peak, millions were without power as ERCOT, Texas's grid operator, began managing the energy load as natural gas and coal fire plants went offline. The cold is blamed for at least 30 deaths. Now, the concern has shifted to water. Uninsulated pipes burst in Dallas and Houston. Millions are now advised to boil water if they have any at all. Alicia Barton, CEO of First Light Power, the largest producer of clean energy here in New England, says this was a disaster on many fronts. We do have a lot of lessons to learn from this situation. The first and foremost, I think, was really a, a failure to plan for future weather conditions. Uh, in particular, and, and uh, as, as has been widely covered in media, much of the infrastructure they were relying on to generate electricity really was not winterized uh, for the type of conditions that actually showed up uh, over the past week. Barton says failure to plan for the future in a changing climate was central to what we are seeing now. Our central reliance on fossil fuel infrastructure is really what has caused climate change. When we look to the future, we have to be thinking about building a grid that is both clean and reliable. Recent studies have shown that government and energy providers get more bang for their buck with proactive investments prior to storms versus during the rebuilding or cleanup process. It's always going to be more cost effective to plan rather than clean up on the backside. And unfortunately, we're seeing, again, there's going to be enormous costs associated with repairing the damage here in Texas. First Light Power operates a wide portfolio of renewable energy, including a battery storage system at Brandeis University and multiple hydro plants in western Massachusetts, something Barton describes as a great complement to variable resources like wind and solar. We have to look forward, not backward, when it comes to embracing, you know, solutions to climate change. And Jacob, just a horrible situation in Texas. So hard to see those images down there. We know it's cold there again this morning, but some relief is on the way. Yeah, they're going to start to thaw out as they go into the next couple of days. They are still at or just above the freezing mark. 23 in Dallas, 33 degrees as you go into Houston. Compare that to us, 26 degrees. You know, they've had this historic shot of cold air that has just set up in the south, and it's finally migrating back to the north, back into Canada, where it hangs out most of the winter. Sometimes we get these polar vortex disruptions that bring that shot of cold air to us. We haven't really seen the cold air like they saw. They were below zero for their afternoon highs in parts of the panhandle of Texas.